programs, but I think uh, a space exploration is absolutely future of mankind. But SpaceX, of course, uh, owned by Elon Musk, one of the world's richest men, or he's not the world's richest man, uh, making their second attempt today at launching the world's most powerful rocket system. Let's talk to space commentator Andy Lound. Good morning to you. Good morning. Always, Thank you for me always back. good to get you on. Um, I wanted to speak to you the other day when we thought it was actually going to happen, and of course it got called off just minutes beforehand. Mm. Tell us what this um, this this test flight is about and why it's so significant. It's significant because it's the first uh, full all-up flight of the largest rocket ever built, 394 feet tall, which has got it's got another 30 feet on the old Saturn V, and this is a, a full flight. <coughs> excuse me, full flight test. Well, they will test out the booster and the second stage on the top of it. And the idea is it won't go into orbital flight. It'll actually go around the world, but it won't go into full orbit. And it is to test the aerodynamics of it, the launching procedures, the pressurization procedures, all the full things you can't really do on a computer because there's only so much you can do with computer simulation. It's a piece of engineering. You've yeah. got to actually fly it, bash it about a bit and see exactly what happens, which is the whole point of this. And it's the very first all of flight of this vehicle, which is quite interesting. Well, uh, we're told that Elon Musk has set very low expectations. He said uh, it was a fundamentally difficult thing to do. Success is not what should be expected. I think he said originally, look, if they don't, if it doesn't completely destroy the entire launch pad, that will be a success. I mean, so much of space, you know, travel, space exploration is going to be hit and miss. Um, but the key thing about all these rockets we've got developed now, SpaceX and others, is that they are reusable. And this is this is really crucial to space exploration, isn't it? It is, because it reduces the cost. And the cost has been the biggest problem with going into space. And yes, I mean, he's realistic. Well, that he's, gravity. He's he understands gravity the reality. also plays a, a role. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it's quite an important element, this is, is it's reusability to bring the costs down. Yeah. So that makes space flights affordable and cost effective for doing the research that's needed for the future economy, of course, because we need rare earth metals and materials like that from space. Yeah. So space, people are talking about using the earth and, and damaging the earth for digging everything out. Well, there's lots of resources available for us on the moon and in space itself. And you need to get the costs down. And this is what this kind of vehicle yeah. will actually do for that. Well, and that's really important. They're not going to be in there not going to be satellites or people on board today if it does take off and no landing will be attempted they'll just discard into the gulf of mexico but the crucial idea is that this will be as you said this will be used to carry astronauts um mm. to the moon and back uh, for the artemis program um via the artemis program and of course that that is going to be crucial in terms of future uh, exploration and the ability to say harness you know rare metals from passing asteroids that like is the ability to set to to actually launch uh, mm. rockets from the moon of course without the uh, without so much gravity and without of course uh the atmosphere which makes it so much harder to launch from the from 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 the earth isn't it so this is all this is all sort of stepping stones to our it future is. exploration we're at the stage at the moment i mean it's, it's no question at all that that the um King of Spain used to get criticised for launching ships out to find the new world. It was yeah. so expensive. What are you doing? But but this is what the stage we're at now with space flight. We are a species that has to expand and move outwards. We have to move forward. And this is where we're actually going to do this. And this is a vehicle that once it's actually up and working, will actually take astronauts, as you said, to the moon. But it yeah. could be refuelled and therefore take astronauts to, to Mars. Yeah. And technically speaking, it, they designed it in such a way it could go beyond there to other parts of our solar system with human crews, possibly up to 100 people on board, yeah. proper exploration of space, rather than in, in Apollo days, which was brilliant, diving on the moon with two people, spending a few hours there, yeah, and then and quickly nipping exactly. back again. Also, really crucially, I mean, people talk constantly, this climate change and destruction of the planet's going to die and all that. The main risk to the planet is another asteroid hit. It would not wiped out the dinosaurs. Asteroid hits happen periodically. The biggest risk we've got is that being able to have, a, you know, mm. so say, strong strong ability to actually you know, launch rockets to be able to actually then divert asteroids, as we mm. saw in recent testing, that is actually going to be crucial to the future of humanity, and rather more crucial than anything else. I do I do just want to get to one other story there today. Daily Star, flat Earth, so the Earth's not as flat as we hoped. Uh, this is a conspiracy theorist. He spent 16 grand on a gyroscope experiment um, hoping know. to prove uh, that the Earth wasn't in fact round. And it turns out he's been really disappointed because apparently it doesn't prove that. I know, it's really funny, isn't it, really? After, after all that, it's great, really. You know, it just... It just makes you it makes you smile sometimes, and and this is what's go it's going to be interesting that we seem to have a modern generation that seems to actually having to prove yeah. that we were all we were right all yeah. along. Well, Maybe you know, we do have this thing called 
the science, don't we? Andy Lowndes, space commentator, thank you very much indeed. Uh, love to find out what the cost of caviar is on the moon <laughs> or in Mars. If anyone could get in touch and let us know this is what the people